Good morning, it is Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. It's One More Thing by Apple. I guess that means one more thing this year. They've had three recent events with the Apple Watch Series 6, the iPhone 12, and apparently today we're gonna see the first silicone-based Max. I don't particularly care about that, seeing that the 15 slash, well, now 16-inch model will not be getting that today. At least it's not expected to. More so care about Big Sur. I actually really wanna get the update I'm ready for a UI change. Um, I signed up for the beta profile. I have not downloaded it because it's on the 11.01 um, update, which I don't want because then I'd be stuck with that beta when the 11.0 release comes out. So hopefully, I'd love to see it drop today, but it's probably gonna be a week from today. We'll talk in a bit during or after the event. Watch you water. Oh my God, they brought it back. That's my thing. Longer battery life. Plug it in. Where are you going? Just plug it in. <laughs> fast. I'm fast. I'm still fast. Check it out. Still got it. You see, still got it. I've always been there. I always will be. I love it. Fast. Okay. <sighs> My battery's drained. I gotta go plug in. Good luck. <laughs> Woo! Outlet! Amazing. Out of focus peanut. Hanging out on my bed because nobody else is home. Hello. All right, uh, well it's fresh. Let's talk about these Macs. So the M1 chip, as they're calling it, Apple-based or silicon-based Macs in the 13-inch MacBook Pro, the iPad or the MacBook Air, and the Mac Mini. So my big question is, is the M1 chip static? You know, is there just one M1 chip? Or does it vary? Go outside. Does it vary between the different products? You know, does the MacBook Pro have a faster or better M1 chip compared to uh, the MacBook Air or the Mac Mini? They did not answer that. Um, the online store is not yet up. It still says finishing touches. We have new products for you, whatever. So I don't, and they never publish that. Like, what is the clock speed of this thing? They did mention the level two cache. Um, it, between the high efficiency cores and the performance cores. If you haven't watched the keynote, it's real short. It's very well done. It's 45 minutes. Go do it. Catch up. Get on the same page because this is big and it's the future of the Mac. So I assume that I kind of want them to all be the same. You know, when you buy an iPad, you don't have a choice between different processors or different chips or adding or removing RAM. The only options you have when buying the products are colors and storage keep or storage capacity you know between 64 128 256 512 whatever gigabytes but i am able to see online without configuring or building one of these things that they're still offering the 13 inch macbook pro with the intel uh, i5 and i7 chips which is curious i, I kind of think it, apple likes these long transition periods of let's have five years of overlap no just do it like with USB-C, just migrate everything to USB-C, it hurts for a few months, we buy the cables, and then we're good for the next five years until USB-W comes out or whatever's next. So, um, my thought process is this is definitely the future of the Mac. Everything in one chip is gonna save power while increasing performance and allow for vast compatibility between iOS apps now running on a Mac. It's, it's just complete ecosystem integration, which is what Apple does. It's what makes their products so damn good. Um, and now bringing the Mac kind of into this ecosystem, it scares some people, it scared me for sure. Um, I think they're gonna do it right. It's gonna take some time. They've got Rosetta too, so stuff's gonna have to be translated, but hopefully apps we use on a, on a more frequent basis are quickly updated and rebuilt. They really stressed how easy it is for developers to do that. I'm not a developer, so I have no idea what that looks like. Um, I hope that is the case that developers can just go and, and write their apps for Apple Silicon and, and have it be this much better. So. Of course, the keynote shows all the good. We have yet to see what the bad is. Um, looks like you can pre-order these Macs today, available. I don't remember if it was Friday or next Tuesday. Big Sur comes out Thursday. I'm glad they made a little announcement there. I don't know why it's not today. Just give it to us. We all want to download it. Uh, but Thursday's not too bad. So that's where we are. Um, it's 5 of 11. I have a customer coming by at 12 o'clock. I'm going to uh, test drive his car. He thinks he's got a slipping clutch on a 99 540 or 2000 540. Of course, it's black. Uh, so we'll see about that. And then at two o'clock, the DME and the black E60 is gonna be flashed to the 2MA software. Uh, so it'll be conceivably drivable once I put oil and a filter in it. And then we'll be able to like start it and firstly, hear what this thing sounds like for the first time in four years. I don't believe it's run for four years, A. And then B, um, 
make sure all of our wiring is good and we've got no codes. So I'm gonna clean things up inside and get up there and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Okay, so we're actually gonna do a little iPad screencast here for the vlog. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but if you're hearing me, then it is. So here's the 13 inch MacBook Pro. It says Apple M1 chip also available with Core i5 or i7. We'll tap on buy. And uh, yeah, Ryan knows tech vibes are back. Let's take a look at the processor. It says Apple M1 with the eight core CPU and GPU, 16 core neural engine. So that's the same between both of these available models. Unified memory. So I'm assuming that is built into the M1 chip then. You know, they're not saying it's DDR4. Uh, I don't know, what are they on? 4,500 megahertz or something like that. Um, it, I, so I guess that does Backs up against the outgoing model and then the 16 inch MacBook Pro with Intel. You know, is this faster? Maybe. So, where are the options for the? Oh, the Intels are down here, which looks like it starts at 17. So, it's significantly more for the Intel. It's $500 more. So, the base M1 machine is 8 gigs RAM, 256 storage at $1299. You want to go to Intel, but that's bumped up. That's a 512 SSD with 16 gigs of RAM and a two gigahertz quad core i5. So yeah, I mean, really we need to see what this performance looks like. Is the M1 a low cost, low performance alternative to these M1 chips or is it better? We'll see in the upcoming days. Last clip of the day somehow here, don't know how that happened. Anyways, we got the DME flashed on the black E60 using WinKFP. I found a company here in Escondido to do it. So that update uh, is done to the DME now.